This is an excellent article from the American Bar Association Journal. It gets right to the heart of the matter for collecting on judgments. And the headline speaks for itself. Why do 80% of judgments remain uncollected? And there's some really good examples of why this happens in this article. We attended a conference many years ago where there was a survey done that there were over $200 billion of assets that were uncollected judgments, meaning that the judgment was issued by the court but had been never collected on. That was only within the last 10 years. So this article was written by a person who was a former law enforcement agent, and he went into the business of searching and collecting for assets. And he talks about his history and, and you know how judgments are obtained and financial forensic research is conducted. And then he had a realization that came to him very early on is why 80% of U.S. civil money judgments continue to be unenforced, leaving the victims of fraud unable to recover the money that the court have already said is rightfully theirs. And that percentage has remained the same, even to this day, which we see every single day. And he asked some people, why were they not enforced? First thing is that there's a belief in the legal industry that attorneys who took these cases were considered low lifes. So it's not very well respected by attorneys, which is fine because attorneys really don't have to do all this. This a lot of times is done by investigators. And why people don't collect on judgments? Well, one of the things is that there's incompetence and lack of initiative. I don't really think it's a lot of times incompetence. I think that if law firms or a plaintiff tries to collect on their judgment or recover their judgment then a lot of times it's done very well it's not incompetent it's just lack of initiative a lot of plaintiffs and creditors and cases don't want to go forward because they feel like they're going to lose or it's going to cost them more money um, there's also the case where they let things slide for example when you issue a deposition and request documents like financial statements bank statements real estate documents then a lot of times the defendant doesn't give it to you. They give you excuses. Oh, I don't have my tax returns. My CPA didn't finish it. My wife's out of town and doesn't have them. I'll get them to you. Um, I didn't understand you met all of my bank records. And then they never follow up. They just let that deposition go and they never follow up. That's the key. to follow up and not let these people off the hook. Proper follow up and analysis could have resulted in recovery of significant amounts of money period. And this particular investigator says we did the follow up and it worked more times than not. We see that. If you follow up, you'll get your money. For a greater understanding of the problem, this person got a list of the top 50 law schools in the country and asked them, "What do you have in the law school curriculum that teaches your judgment, teaching your students how to enforce judgments?" Three of them said, "We cover judgment enforcement for an hour or so." The other 47 said they had nothing in their curriculum. Think about it. 50 top lawsuits, I'm sorry, 50 top law schools, only three of them have maybe an hour in their curriculum. The attorneys aren't focusing on this. It's not their fault. They have plenty of things to work on. The asset investigation, asset recovery is more of an investigative process, not as much of a legal process. Obviously, you need an attorney to execute some of it. And then what is the right path uh, based on this person has spent 50 years of experience that what the recovery efforts are, neither depositions or interrogators should be used and at least 80% of the questions have been answered and documented. Get the answers in advance and then do that. Um, finding and following the money. This is absolutely the, the thing you want to do. Don't just find out where the money is now. Follow where it came from, where it went to. Get closing statements on real estate. Get historical bank documents. Get even vehicle applications for loans. Get every tax return you can. You'll find a well-documented trail. That's what you want to find. Not just a bank statement right today. You want to find the whole trail of assets to find out where it's distributed to and who else is holding the money for your debtor. Again, it's not what you win in a lawsuit because you can't cash a lawsuit. It's what you recover. This was a well-written article. It gets right to the heart of it. Unfortunately, a lot of plaintiffs and creditors um, are, are never going to get their money because they don't go through these very simple tasks to do asset recovery and get the money that's rightfully yours.